In May 2020, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law an executive order to grant financial autonomy to the legislature and the judiciary across the 36 states of the country. Many governors were left shocked by the president's action coming so soon after the financial autonomy granted local governments by his same administration. The aggrieved governors saw the signing of the executive order as a breach of ongoing talks between them and the presidency on how to go about the autonomy. Well, joining us to have this conversation uh, is the good governance advocate, Shegun Chopitan, legal practitioner, Jide Ologun, and local government chairman, Equiri Local Government in River State, Samuel Mwanosike. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, let's start with the Nigerian Federation. Now, the Nigeria uh, operates a federation and, of course, some, some sort of unitary system. Um, now, this federation operates th um, 36 states, uh, which are under governors, 774 local governments, which are local government areas, which are under local government chairman. But the local governments somewhat have become an extension uh, of state government, and uh, which also has made state governments very okay to dip its hands into local government funds and not just stop there, but go beyond and begin to take on some of the responsibilities of local government. I'll start with you, Barista Logan. What does the Constitution really clearly say about this? I mean, the 1999 Constitution as amended um, about local governments. If you look at the, if you look at section 121, subsection 3, for example, it says any amount standing to the credit of the judiciary in the consolidated revenue fund of the state shall be paid directly to the heads of the courts concerned. And if you look at the uh, executive order number 10 endorsed by the president, it's also in this direction. But the challenge we have now is the compliance. So how do you make the governor to comply with this? And at the federal level, it's not uh, it's, it's not a difficult thing. It, it is the practice that has been on. <clears throat> but at the state level, it has become what people consider as a tool of manipulation. And many local government authorities have complained that they are not performing because the resources that could have been released to them to carry out their function were being you know, held down by the executive governors of the state. And that is why uh, till today, they are still having it difficult to get the governors to comply. But the governor said, and I think that was um, about a year ago, that they are not against this or the 10 executive uh, order of the president, but that they are trying to sort out some gray areas. And what those gray areas are, are probably known to them alone. But I think we should come to the point where, when we set institutional standards, we should be able to make those who should comply to comply. And that is when we can claim to be playing by the rule of law as against disrespect to the rule of law. And that is where we are right now. And at local government level, for instance, they are afraid to challenge the governor. Well, you know, because you know what it entails to become the chairman or caretaker of a local government area. And that is where we are now. Okay, Barista, just, just, put, just put a pin there. I'm, com I'm going to come back to you. But let me go to Shegun before I go to um, Samuel, because Samuel is a, a local government chairman. Um, Shegun, can you explain to us why you think that there's a strange, or there's a stranglehold on local governments um, by state governments? Because, I mean, federal governments over the years have granted autonomy to every department under them, I'm talking about, or oh, that works with them, I'm talking about the judiciary, INEC, they've given them financial autonomy. But in, this, in the case of states, the reverse is totally the case. So tell me, as somebody who advocates for good governance, can you explain to my viewers why this stranglehold on local governments by states? Um, yeah, thanks for having me again, Marianne. Um, I think the answer is a political one, you know. Um, you have to remember that for a majority of the guys 
that we have in office in governance at all levels, across all levels, federal, state, and local, um, it, it's about the politics for them. It's about being in office and being in power, right? And that game is a game of numbers. Mm. Um, it's a game of grassroots mobilization, right? So I, I always tell my friends, you know, who are on social media, Twitter, all the WhatsApp groups, Facebook, you know, you say all of those things that you want to say. When the time for elections come, it is going to be decided by feet on the ground in the grassroots. And, um, you know, one of the things that our politicians have learned to do over the years is they've learned to use the resources of state, the might of the state, to gain control and access to the people. You know, so whoever is in control of the local government, first of all, automatically means that that person is in control of the grassroots structures mm. in that local government, right? And then remember that um, the business of governance, you can't do without the legislature, you can't do without the judiciary. You're going to have to go to the judiciary for adjudication and interpretation of things when, you know, when things are going wrong and you're having disputes. It's very, very important for them, still within this equation of control of the political machinery, to have these two arms of government in their control. So they are going to do everything possible to ensure that the local, gov sorry, the, the state house of, houses of assembly don't get this autonomy in spite of the um, um, executive order by the president, and that the local governments don't get this autonomy in spite of that, that same, you know, the president has also issued another executive, executive order prior to this, mm -hmm. you know. So this is politics, okay. it's control of resources, it's control of machinery, and they're going to do everything in their power to fight against this, whether through the courts or through just simple disobedience of, you know, of policies and regulations that have been issued um, legal, that are legally um, legitimate, okay. which I'm sure uh, our legal colleagues will, 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 will uh, validate. Let me come to you, Mr. Samuel Wanosiki. Uh, for those who do not know, he is the local government chairman for a query local government uh, area in River State. Um, there have been queries as to why state electoral commissions are deemed to lack credibility when it comes to local government elections. Um, and why it is that in every election um, that happens at the local level, the ruling party always wins all of the seats that are being cont uh, contested for. In your case, I would like to ask, was there any seat in your state that was won by the opposition? I mean, one, at least one seat. And why do you think, uh, have you ever felt that the state governments were um, dipping their hands into your pockets a bit too much or they were being overbearing in any form? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. And I want to say that this is the first time I've been on Post TV. Um, I want to say clearly that uh, for us in River State, the 23 local government chairmen are, uh, if I would consider being in paradise, because we didn't need an executive order to be signed by Mr. President for what is happening in River State to be happening. Um, and when we talk in River State, we say we challenge the media, come for verification, send your reporters behind us and ask questions independently in the streets, come and look at our books so that you can agree with us that we are talking about reality. We believe in River State that for Nigeria to really, really develop, that we must build this nation from the grassroots to the state and to the, nation, to the, to the center of Abuja. The drafters of our constitution, we are very deliberate to say there will be 774 local governments in this nation that will make the third tier system. So we didn't need an executive order from Mr. President for that to be achieved. What is happening in River State is that local government chairmen are working, local government chairmen are not globetrotting, local government chairmen are not running councils from their premises or from their hotel rooms. Local government chairmen are giving dividends of democracy for the eyes to see hands to touch. So you're telling me that, believe. Mr. Wanashiki, so you're telling me that if I were to come to River State today, which I'm going to take you up on that offer, uh, and we were to check how governance is working in the local government areas, that local government areas in River State have some form of a financial autonomy, that's what you're telling me. Again, 
there has been yeah, a report. Yes, there has been a report saying that local governments in the country in general have collapsed because of how overbearing gov governors have been. But you're telling me that in River State the case is different. That Governor Wike is allowing some form of autonomy for local governments. Could all your colleagues be saying the same thing? And could that also be because all of your local government chairmen belong to the same party with the governor? Could that be the case? Uh, hello, madam. I don't yes. know if you can hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me, madam? Yes. Okay, good. Now, in River State, why I'm particular about River State is that we had an old order before Yes Owike became governor. And an election was conducted in 2018 that all shut us in as local government chairman. And by the laws of the River State of Assembly, that is the supervising authority that the constitution has said that we have a three-year tenor. That three-year tenor is coming to an end by the end of May. As we speak, we are, we are facing another round of election. I, for one, talking to you, I'm going for a second time in office. Miriam, I don't want to blow my trumpet. I'm challenging you and your media men. I want you to come to River State. I will, I will fund your trip. I will pay your flight ticket. I will pay your hotel bills. <laughs> when you take the records, I want you to put it for the world to see what is happening in my local government, including local government, where the Minister for Transportation comes from, where two governors have come from, Governor Selassie Ngozi Chomeha and Governor Rotimi Amitri has come from. Come and see for yourself what we call local government activities or local government council. We are not just mounting it. We are saying that we have projects in the 13 wards of Ikure local government. We have completed seven of them at the ward level. We have built a local government befitting secretariat. If you know Ikure local government before now, Miriam, I know you worked in protocols. Come and see for yourself what is in Ikure local government today. That is on that one. Apart from infrastructure, we are doing policies and programs okay. that are touching so the this is, in the this heart is, of this is not, we have supported this is, this is not, agents So this is not a scorecard for you. Uh, Mr. Wanosike, let me bring you back. Let me bring you back to the conversation. Just hold on, Mr. Wanosike. This is not a show for you to give a scorecard. That day will come. But I, I asked you a question and you haven't answered me. Please, can you answer me? If you did not belong to the party, the same political party, because I need to go back to my other guest. If you did not belong to the same political party with Governor Yeshun Wiki, would you be singing this same song? Uh, uh, please, Governor Yeshun Wiki is not the subject of discussion now. But I want to tell you, but in River State, Miriam, can you, you answer, know. Can you quickly on, answer my on. question? You question. If the opposition the were to you have be to allow me in the power and you were somewhat Miriam. the only local government chairman that was able to win your seat, would you be singing the same song? Yes or what no? I'm trying to tell you that in River State, if you're not on ground, you cannot win the election. It doesn't matter what political party that you belong to. Miriam, I'm telling you, in this election, in this election that we are going to go to now, Political parties that will field candidates that have the capacity to win election by the mandate of people will win. Because now, everybody else has set a standard. He has said clearly, you must allow the votes of the people begin to count if you don't want to in Nigeria. Okay. So if you All go right. and influence All right. the votes of the people, you should expect a reaction from the people. So okay. everybody else is building a system of young leaders who are ready to work for their people. Not the local government chairman that today he'll be in Dubai, okay. tomorrow he'll be in New York, next tomorrow he'll be, and he doesn't understand what's happening in the system. Okay. All the 23 local government chairmen in River State are at their point of duty as we speak. Come okay. and check your facts. All right, let me come back to you, Mr. Gideon Logo, and quickly to um, Shegun so that we can um, wrap this up. Mr. Logo, um, some analysts have prescribed that um, the Attorney General of the Federation um, goes to the Supreme Court and seek some form of order um, that would compel governors to implement these executive orders to allow for, you know, um, some form of autonomy to happen. If this were to be pushed for, will this help us going forward so that local governments can finally find their feet? The Attorney General has prerogative, and the concern is that if our nation has descended the level where we have constitutional provision and executive order of the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, and some decide not to comply, then we must really, really be, if not so ashamed, a bit ashamed. In the words of the 
uh, Attorney General and Minister of Justice of the Federation, Aoba Kamalami himself, he disclosed that the executive for the 10th of 2020 makes it mandatory that all states of the Federation should include the allocations of both the legislature and the judiciary, the first line charge of their budget. So what else do they need to obey? And if uh, the disclosure we have from Mr. Samuel is to go by, the impact of the top tier government, the local government should be felt by the people. That is the closest arm okay. of political operational machinery that mobilizes at the grassroots. If the local government governance system is effective, we won't be shouting like we are shouting in Nigeria. In fact, you may not even know you have a federal government mm. if we are effective at the local level. I mean, All right. so you need to look at it from bottom up and from top bottom. The right. essence of governance is to enhance the fortunes of the people. So if we now need to be struggling to implement our laws and executive order, I'm afraid that we have systemic crisis in the nation. All right, Shago, quickly, in one minute, um, if we're seeking for better government uh, or governance at all levels um, and accountability, how do we make sure that the people themselves galvanize and push for these governors to do the right thing? I mean, we, we don't have uh, much of a choice other than to continue to um, mobilize, to continue to educate, you know. So I always do that. Everybody that knows me will know that I'm very, very vocal when it comes to governance issues. We have to encourage people to hold their governors, their representatives, their local government chairmen accountable by going to their offices. You know, you had the conversation before now about offices, constituency offices, local government chairmen. How many people know their local government chairman in this country? because of the issue of the relevance of their function to the average person's everyday life. I was going right? to answer that so question, then I thought to, twice, <laughs> I don't know my local government chairman, so I just, I, I just kept quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a common problem in this country, right? So we need to change that. We need to all get interested in this. We need to okay. be able to go to uh, Mr. Samuel, for example, you know, and let his citizens ask him, what have you done about the roads, you know, the bad roads here, you know, the lack of um, water in this place, and so on and so forth. We don't do enough of that. We're all too carried away with pursuing the federal government, you know, over things that really, really don't affect us directly. Right. So yeah. we need to change that by continuing to educate people. Well, I want to thank everybody, but I'm, I'm also going to say, uh, Honorable Wanosike, we're taking you up on that offer and we're coming to check your books. Be ready. Um, Samuel Wanosike. Yes, uh, finally, before you, uh, me, 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 before you go, please. In don't one, be, don't in be, one don't, sentence. Don't, don't, one treat sentence. me fairly. Give me my last bite. I want to say, we have a constitution. Why will a governor be interested in dipping his hands in the front of the local government? In River State, we have a meeting. And the governor steps in and he says, if you're a local government chairman and you cannot explain how you have managed the funds of the state for this period to this period, and the panel is set, the deputy governor is the chairman of the panel, they are screened, books are looked into. We have in the local government system, we have Ministry of Local Government monitoring activities. We have local government service called monitoring activities. Okay. The truth of the matter is that when governors try to play God, there is an issue. We thank God for giving us a leader like Governor Sun Wiki, and we are asking okay. Nigerians that the time to stop talking to has come. Let's start walking the right okay. direction. Thank you Enough very much. Of this. Thank you. We have to go. We're out of time. Samuel Wanosike is the local government chairman for Equerry Local Government Area in River State. Uh, we have had Shegun Shopita. He is a good governance advocate. And Gideo Logun is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank, Thank you, you very much. God bless Thank Nigeria. You Thank All you right. for the opportunity. Well, we'll take a short break now and see what Nigerians have to say about the performance of the House of Representatives. And when we come back, it'll be time for my take. They are not doing anything at all. We are not seeing any effort from them. They are just wicked. And we, in fact, we are tired of them. We are tired of politicians in Nigeria. We, we prefer to go back to the military regime. They are not doing good, thank you. They've not done enough. And we are lacking so many things. And everything falls back to us, the citizens. The House of Rep, they've not done enough. They've not done enough in the sense that they are not, they are not presenting themselves as the leaders that they claim to be. 
No, not really. I don't think they're doing that well. As far as I'm concerned, I cannot really say that particularly what they have done. Because so far, we just hear stories, promises, and we don't actually see them actualize anything. Even down to their constituency, I've not seen anything happen. Ah, this is uh, the Nigeria way we do this now. We just say, uh, also, they have doing their own work to, to remember people for, for, for the food for them now. They have not remembered people from the outside. You know, they just remember themselves or their own family and this thing. This uh, situation we do for Nigeria now, there are a lot of them that are just country, cost it. Because, like, say, we are doing a uh, rope, there's no road, no anything. Some of them, they will take a road contract for themselves and put them for their own family for this and that. So, how do we know that we are doing Here's my take. The calls for local government autonomy didn't start today. The concept of separation of powers cannot be played down, especially if the constitution backs it. Why then are local governments not allowed to do their jobs independently? These are the people who take governance to those who need government the most. The grassroots. The woman in the rural area can't get access to the state governor. No, she can't. She can reach out to her councillor in her ward. If it's beyond them, then it goes to the chairman. That's why we need local governments. We have for too long blurred the lines between local governance and state governance. So here it goes. Mr. State Governor, you need to step aside and allow true federalism and democracy to th thrive. Mr. Governor, allow for quality elections to take place in your state and your local governments. It will be better for all of us. Let these states' electoral commissions gain back their credibility. And to our representatives, it's time that you put yourself aside and really work in the interest of your people, the people that you swore to serve. Stop fighting for cars and personal benefits. Start doing the job that you were initially mandated to do. Do your constituents know or have access to you? Do you know where, do they know where your constituency offices are? Instead of complaining about pressure, educate them on your roles and responsibilities so that they know your job and they can deal with you in that regard. Keep your promises, the ones you made to them when you asked for their votes. I am Mary Anacom, thanking you for watching Plus Politics. Have a good evening.